special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. I'm doing great with you, Neil. Yes, Leo Severino, you are incredible. The movies that you're making, but you started out being a lawyer and then decided to go into the movie industry, which that had to be quite a shift for one thing. Um, and it's, I don't know how the creative flows with the lawyering, but uh, you have been a groundbreaker. Like um, Sound of Freedom, Freedom is the biggest independent grossing film, I think, in the history of the world. And it must be so exciting for you to see your films go out there and do so well. Well, thank you, Kim. Yeah, uh, I think the passion of the Christ beat us independently. And I think also my Big Fat Greek Wedding. But top three is not bad. So we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Yes. And, uh, you know, our other films, Bella and Little Boy and now Cabrini in theaters. Um, you know, we're, we're very proud of the work that we've done. Uh, but to your question is, and first of all, thank you guys for having me. Neil, thank you for all your good You're work. You're welcome. And, and, and Kim as well. But um, the transition actually from, from attorney to producer in Hollywood is pretty common. If you're on the business transaction sides of the equation, which I was, I was on the litigation side as an attorney, I was on the transactional side at 20th Century Fox. That's where you do the contracts at every step of the production from, you know, the script all the way through the distribution. So you kind of learn the industry that way. So it was kind of a natural transition to me. What wasn't so natural was starting writing. Uh, you know, now I, I do a lot of the writing with our uh, our team on some of these projects. Uh, that was something that I kind of grew into. I always had a little bit of a knack for a creative side, but I didn't realize that I could actually try to do this for a living. So that's been a nice surprise. No, it seems like a, a great surprise. And, you know, going in this level and then seeing these movies that at first people didn't think we're going to go do well in the box office. They thought, okay, but not to the level that it's happened. What do you think the secret sauce is? Well, I don't know that there is a secret sauce. I think it's, uh, you know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. What we're trying to do is just, uh, great art at a, at a high artistic level and hopefully each film will get better and better that way and we've got an incredible team our director Alejandro Monteverde there our cinematographer Gorka Andrew our production designer our visual effects supervisor Brian Battles I mean these guys are just top top notch guys so uh, at the level of art is just trying to be inspired and and do what we can um, to match all the great masterpieces of, of all time so the, the the formula is there I think what's a little bit different about us is we're trying to do films that are uh, that also have an element of of altruism, of of hope, of inspiration, and I think maybe that's the thing that might be missing in a lot of a lot of uh, films out there that are at the highest artistic level. So maybe that's a, maybe that's the sweet spot that we're trying to hit is not only films that are that are that are beautiful, but that are also that speak to the truth in the human heart and the goodness of the human heart. Um, that's what we're trying to do. So maybe 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 that's the secret sauce if there is one. Well, I'll tell you, I have seen Cabrini twice. I think that is your secret sauce. And um, Mother Cabrini, I never knew anything about her before the movie. And now she's my biggest hero. Mm -hmm. Like, it's an unbelievable story that I'm so glad that you got out there and told. But this little feisty nun mm -hmm. from Italy, the things that she accomplished were amazing. And I think she was probably the first nun to go out without the covering of a priest like she wasn't really under a priest right when she that's left right, that's, right. that's yeah. correct yeah no and uh, by the way i shared that ignorance when the executive producer Eustace wolvington who who was the, he funded our first film bella came back and said i, I want to make this other film and i said great we've got a whole stable of films that we're working on he said no no i have one in particular it's about mother cabrini and i said mother who i had no idea who she was and being italian being catholic you would think you would know who the first canonized American saint was, but no, I did not. Uh, and you're, you're absolutely right. She, um, it was obstacle after obstacle. You know, the, the first obstacle was that um, there had never been an order of missionary nuns, women, that were not under the auspices authority of some existing order of men, of, of priests. So that was the first hurdle. And Pope Leo XIII gave her that mission. Um, and so she faced anti- anti-woman sentiment, anti-immigrant sentiment, anti-Catholic sentiment, anti-nun sentiment. It was just thing after thing. But her biggest challenge wasn't even that. It wasn't the externals. It was internal. She was so frail. She was this tiny little thing, like you mentioned. But she almost died when she was uh, six or seven years old from smallpox. And then she almost died from tuberculosis. Then she had post-tuberculosis uh, syndrome where her lungs were compromised. Her immune system was compromised. She almost drowned in a river. She was given a couple of years to live repeatedly in her life. And that was kind of the biggest challenge that she was facing. She would wake up every morning and face death. 
And it never stopped her. She wound up being an, an Empire of Hope larger than the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers ever did. Uh, so it's, it's just an unbelievable story. Without giving the story away and the success that's been the box office, what differentiates her from other saints and other, I guess, religious in the story and what she did? Well, I, I think there's one thing in particular. I mean, it, it's not particular to her, but it, she's she had this determination. She had this drive and she the, this she would not accept no as an answer. When she felt that the calling was from on high, that it was the right thing to do, it didn't matter. She would find a way to 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 bust her way through it and 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 make it happen. And there's actually someone else that maybe people know a little better that was inspired by her. So this was in 1946. It was the process of canonization where the Catholic Church declares that someone is a saint. Um, there was a young nun who was part of a teaching order of nuns called the Loretto nuns. She was at the canonization, was inspired by Mother Cabrini to leave her teaching order and start an order of missionaries. And she wound up changing the world. That nun was Mother Teresa. So it's it's kind of to, to think about Mother Cabrini. Yeah, think of Mother C Teresa before Mother Teresa that inspired Mother Teresa. That's the oh, idea. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, it's amazing what Mother Cabrini did, all of the things she did. And starting out in a very hard place, this tough neighborhood of New York where the Italians were so discriminated against and just thought of as leftover people. And yeah. she went in there against all odds, started this orphanage and was successful at it. And and I'm wondering, what do, what do you think the the fact that she was a woman, how how it played out? Because there are scenes when I, I've thought, well, if she were a man, she might have gotten slugged right then. Well, that's exactly what happened. So yeah, for, when you read her writings and you read the biographies of her time, um, that area of five points in Southern Manhattan, New York at that time was right across from Ellis Island is where all the immigrants came. So before then the Irish faced their issues and the Polish and the Jewish people and all these immigrants were all kind of clashing at that time. And particularly at that time, it was the Irish and the Italians. There was a film by Martin Scorsese, Gangs of New York, that kind of memorialized that time. She was dropped right in the middle of that. And her femininity actually is what helped. Before then there was priests and there was others who were trying to help because there was so many... Um, immigrants that were living in poverty, stacked in these housings called tenements. There was millions of them jammed into this little area with no means, no hope, orphans all over the place, uh, literally kids dying on the street. And previously, priests and others had tried to go in there, but you're exactly right. They were subject to violence, to extortion, to you know all these sorts of things uh, from these, uh, these gangs that initially became the Irish and the Italian mafia. But when Mother Cabrini walked in there with her femininity, these men still had a sense of decorum. They had a, a sense of a certain honor and a certain respect. So they let her in. And then after a while, they started protecting her. And then they started helping her. So her femininity wow. really unlocked yeah. the door to be able to get to these uh, these people. And she changed the face of, of Manhattan by um, building orphanages and schools and hospitals. Uh, because at the time, there was there was no such services for, for, for these people. Um, so it was just it's an astonishing feat. It sounds like an astonishing feat. And you talk about the what she had to deal with, with the men and the crime and all these things that really aren't highlighted enough. And this film highlighted it. And do you feel that the crew, the actors you were able to get on this film is making it even more because of the people that you were able to find to play the characters? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what you think, Kim, but I think that uh, the lead actress, Christiana Delana, sh should get a, a, a nomination for her work. She was so strong Absolutely. and yet vulnerable and 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 authentic. It was just beautiful. And then we had some heavy duty actors, uh, David Morris playing the Archbishop. Um, you know, you might know him from Green Mile and a billion other projects. And of course, the great John Lithgow as the as the big antagonist, the mayor. So the acting was just uh, top notch as is the cinematography the production design i really think it's it's just a beautiful film to see now it really I, is. well oh. i go uh, go kim i'm going to give you the love question i just want to ask one other follow up and this one's interesting how is it hard is it with a faith based film to cast such superstars you know that it's happening now more and more you know people moving into more of the faith based uh acting even if they really aren't as faith filled they are joining that. How is how difficult of a process is it to share these stories and say, hey, we want you to, be, to play this part? 
Yeah, I and mean, then listen, you can't separate the nun from the faith, obviously. Right? Right. She's, she's wearing a cross and a habit and right. you know, meeting with the popes and bishops and priests and everything else. Um, and, and she's praying in the film and whatnot. So we didn't set out to make a faith-based film, faith film specifically. We set out to make a great film. And it happened to be about this woman who happened to also be a nun, who happened to also be a saint. Right? These things for us were, were secondary, not in as much as they were secondary in her life, but they were secondary as to they, they weren't the things that were driving the story. What was driving the story is the things that are universal to all people, where they relate to a story, the struggle, the strife, the conflict, the overcoming of the obstacles, those sorts of things. And so I think that's what came through in the script. Hopefully that's what came through in the movie, not ignoring the faith element. That was absolutely crucial to her, but it wasn't the 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 uh, the, the vehicle upon which we built the story. We thought that what was much more interesting to build the story across is all these other things that we've been talking about being dropped into this area that's extremely violent and trying and having nothing, not even speaking the language. And how do you overcome all that to create this incredible, incredible empire of hope? So I think the, uh, the actors all resonated with, with, with the story as a story. And then when they met, they, when you meet our director, Alejandro Monteverde, you're in, his vision is just contagious and, and it's beautiful. And I really think film to film from Bella to little boy, to sound of freedom to Cabrini, he's just up in his game. So uh, I, I consider him one of the greatest directors of our generation. Yeah, okay. well, I'll tell you, the film is absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. The set design, the costume design, every element is there. And sometimes with a film, you see some of it. Um, this film, it is all there. It is all there and it's all fantastic. It is so well done. I encourage everybody in the world needs to see this film. It's inspiring. It's uplifting. It is everything you want a film to be. It's intense. It's so fun to watch and uh, thank you for making it. I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I love to ask this, this question at the end of our interviews. I dedicated a year to figuring out the true meaning of love. And when I was doing this, I, I used 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. Used one of the terms or words a month to figure out, well, what is love that is patient? What is love that is kind? I was in Haiti mm -hmm. for the majority of the time, which um, is an interesting place to go if you've never yeah. been. Especially and, now. Yeah, yeah. So it was sort of this eat, pray, love, crazy experience, but I learned so much. And I see you and I see your films and there's, you have a passion to do. It's very obvious that, that it's not about making money. It's about telling a story and you have such passion for it. I'm curious, where does love play a role? for you in, in filmmaking and what you do in your life? What a question. <laughs> what is the most important thing in the universe play a role in what you're doing? Well, hopefully it's central. Um, I, I, I prefer when thinking about love kind of abstractly, kind of the old classical philosophical definitions from Aristotle and Aquinas and whatnot of willing, willing the good. Um, so, you know, I take that two ways. One, is obviously willing good for our fellow man and our films. That's what we want. We don't want to be scarring people's imaginations with our films. We don't want to be uh, promoting things that are that are dark and nihilistic and depressing. And you know that's, that's not what we want to try to uplift and inspire. And uh, hopefully, in that sense, we're loving our audience. We're willing the good, but also willing in the good, um, in in the sense of the, the good and the, the the beauty of art. Art is a way that can open up people's hearts and and let that light shine in them and hopefully inspire them to uh, to love others as well. So uh, hopefully I answered your question. It's a, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, but you're able to answer it in your passion and everything. So people can check out Cabrini Stone Theaters. And when are you expecting it to go on VOD and stuff? When is that? Oh, well, I mean, it still has a theatrical run and we're doing uh, international releasing all throughout the world. So it'll, it'll be a while. But yes, if... Uh, you know, thanks to Angel Studios, by the way, for supporting this film and supporting Sound of Freedom. Without them, you know, I don't think this film would have really been able to see the light of day. And so uh, if people want to support the film, they can go to angel.com slash Cabrini or just angel.com. It'll be there on the front page. So you're ready to make Kim's movie, right? About yes. her, her experience of love is. Yeah, I think that's, look at me. See, I told you I'm the agent, Kim. Now, we'll have to kind of talk about that outside of here, but I think this, her story will be a fantastic story, especially what's going on in Haiti now. Leo, Sound I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys. And yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a beautiful experience that you had there exploring. I mean, what what better thing is there to explore than love, right? Yes, exactly. All right. Thanks, Leo. All right. Thank that you was guys. the Samuel Castanil Haley Show and the Love is Podcast, guys. Take care.